today's video, I want to build out a few more features for the windows. So far, we've mostly focused on where to put code for the renderer specific stuff and where to put code for the window specific stuff and how to make sure we can just create and destroy windows for multiple different rendering systems all under the same API sort of boundaries. But now I want to just go in and flesh out some details on the OS specific but API agnostic stuff. So when we create a window, no matter what renderer we're using, it has certain features that are gonna work the same no matter what. So we're gonna go in and deal with some of those things. Let's get started. The first thing I wanna handle is user window resizing. Whenever the user grabs the edge of the window or maximizes it or uses the window key to move it around automatically, the window gets resized and that comes to the code from outside of the program, right? The program is not the thing that is responsible for setting a new size of the window. The window just gets a new size automatically. So in order to actually draw the window in a nice looking way and be able to fully handle that, we kind of have to start doing a little bit of input handling. We have to at least read what the new window size is whenever that happens, and then be able to render at that window size immediately. So first I'm going to use my OpenGL example to just experiment with the window messages that are relevant and get an idea of how I want to implement that. Separately, on the D3D example, I'm also going to have to do a little bit of experimentation because I haven't actually managed to get the window to draw the right aspect ratio yet. I've been just ignoring that because I knew sooner or later I was going to have to handle this anyways. So now we're going to try to actually show the D3D window rescaling its buffer and view, render view so that the details on the screen are scaling correctly. It's a little bit jumping the gun because I don't actually care right now about getting the fidelity of the graphics up, but it's sort of relevant to what I'm doing, so I figure I would play with it today when I'm doing this other stuff. So one little wrinkle here is that the D3D window, the way I had implemented it, I was holding on to three separate objects for each window. And as I mentioned a little bit at the last video, I don't actually need to hold on to so many handles with D3D. I can create some objects and release them when I'm done with them and others I do need to hold on to. So I'm gonna take a quick minute here to simplify the D3D window implementation down to just holding on to the swap chain. And that makes it a lot easier to do the resizing because you are supposed to release everything else before you resize the swap chain or it doesn't work. So I have to get that in there and then we can get back to finishing up this resizing feature. On Windows, what happens when the window starts getting resized is that the normal input loop is sort of broken. So usually the way inputs happen in the main UI loop is that you gather up some inputs from a function that returns one message at a time, and then you go and update the frame and you go back to the top of the loop. Unfortunately, that function that you call to gather up inputs doesn't return if the user is resizing the window. Instead, what happens is all of the resizing is handled inside of that function. So your main loop gets sort of cut off, and instead you have to update the display of the window by handling the WM size message. And so while the window is being resized, you are constantly getting this WM size message, and that is your opportunity to actually repaint things. Previously, we weren't doing any painting there, so if I was resizing the window in previous videos, you'll see that there are like weird margins and borders behaving strangely and looking ugly. For it to not look ugly, what I have to do is repaint the window that's being resized whenever it, we get that message. So the way I'm going to handle that in this code base, to keep it fairly straightforward, because I, I don't think there's going to be a great solution to this, it's always going to be a little bit of an icky problem just because of the way the underlying APIs are structured. 
so what I'm going to do is just embrace the fact that it's a little bit icky. I could put in a lot of effort to sort of make the API on my side better, but instead I'm just going to embrace the fact that it's this weird event handling thing. It's a separate path that doesn't fit in with the normal UI loop. And so what I'm going to do is say that there's a hook that you can set into the main graphics layer that tells the graphics layer what you want to do to paint a window when it's being resized. And we'll always treat that as different behavior from how we normally paint the window during a normal UI loop. Also, while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and give each window a quote unquote user data right now. So when you create a window with my window API, you'll also be able to create a user data for it. And that'll just be storing a void pointer on it, whether that's an integer that's treated as a, point, a void pointer or an actual pointer to memory that you're managing separately is up to the user. But the idea for this is just sometimes you wanna be able to associate something onto one of these handles and it's easier to just have a pointer that does that for you rather than keep a hash map or something of mapping handles to your data. In this particular case, the reason I need it is because I'm equipping some windows with a D3D renderer and some windows with an OpenGL renderer. And since I have an abstracted those yet, I need different paths for rendering each type of window. Later on, this sort of thing won't be the reason why we use a user data, because we'll have that abstraction over the, the two different graphics backends, or however many different graphics backends, in which case this won't really matter as much. But I'm sure other things will come up here and there where a user data might be helpful. So we're going to just throw that in here while we're at it. Okay, so that's pretty much it for resizing. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put in some more basic window status and window feature support. This is just stuff like the ability to set the title on the window, the, abil the ability to set the size and position of the window, the ability to read the size and position of the window, as well as the ability to check certain other types of status like minimized and maximized. One really great feature to have is the ability to make a window full screen. It's just a nice effect for certain kinds of programs and certain kinds of games. Unfortunately, making a full screen window on Windows is kind of weird. If you want to do it, what you have to do is go to DuckDuckGo, type in Raymond Chen full screen, and that will bring up this blog post. In this blog post, a person named Raymond Chen, who knows a lot about the internals of the Windows operating system and how it's implemented and how you need to interact with it explains how to do it. And the answer is basically there's some random functions you have to call that don't quite have any particular sign in them that in the documentation or anywhere that they are about going full screen. But if you call them in the right order, they make a full screen window. And it's a little bit confusing and tricky because you can't be quite sure which details are actually relevant to going full screen and which ones are just incidental. So you always have to like test this out a little bit carefully and you can never quite be sure that you know what's happening because it's just some magic behind the scenes that makes it work. Then you take that piece of code that he's got there and you paste it into your program, massage it a little bit to make it a little bit more like what you want, testing it along the way since it's not super clear which parts are relevant and which parts aren't and then you've got a full screen window.
Finally, I wanted to put in a feature that would disable user resizing of the window. So that's not to say that it completely disables any resizing of the window, the program can still resize it and you can still minimize it, which technically makes the size zero. But besides that, the idea is I don't want the user to be able to resize all of my windows. Sometimes I want to be able to create a window, especially when you're making a game. Uh, where you know the resolution won't change. And so you want to be able to disable the user resizing the window and maximizing the window. So that's what I'm doing here. All right, so that's all the programming for today. I do want to just go ahead and let all the docs sort of scroll on by here because there were a bunch of them in this particular video and tracking them all down can just be annoying. So if you're curious about how any particular thing I did today got implemented, it's somewhere inside of one of these functions. And that's it for our first part of the graphics videos. I'm going to now take a break. There won't be another video right away, but when I come back, the next series of videos will be more graphics because we still have a lot to do. We've done all the operating system abstraction stuff here, but there's still plenty to do. We need to create actual graphics on the screens next, show things that are useful, be able to do basic stuff like drawing text and icons and shapes. And we wanna be able to abstract those things for OpenGL and D3D in a very simple way. And so those kinds of things need to happen still, and they're gonna be a all the things we do in the second section of this graphics arc. See you then.